Saba um, is going to speak next. She's from the UK, US, currently in the US. Uh, she's a longtime political activist and radical feminist, currently living in California, mother of two children. She's a founding member of WOLF and Deep Green Resistance. She's deeply committed to strategic political resistance and the plow power of collective organizing. Saba is going to talk to us about how gender ideologues have obscured the discussion around what constitutes gender and have made no debate issue by shaming people into comparing those who question their ideology with racists and homophobes. So welcome. Thank you so much for speaking, Saba, and over to you. It's important for me uh, as a woman of colour uh, to refute the idea that believing that biology is important and that a woman is an adult human female, uh, to have those views is the same as being racist. We're often called Nazis. We're told that, you know, you're being the same as it's the same as when white people were racist and they didn't want black people to be in their spaces. Um, and they've trans activists and their supporters have more than once characterized themselves as the new civil rights frontier. And so as someone who's experienced uh, racism, violence and prejudice personally and uh, systemically, I find that comparison really distressing and, and offensive. So I have to also say clearly, and I wish I didn't have to say this, but apparently because my views are considered violent, I want to just uh, express that I think I believe that all people deserve basic human rights. They deserve to live without fear of oppression or violence and to have access to housing, jobs and equality before the law and judicial systems, wherever you are, however you dress or present yourself and however you identify. So let's make that really clear. Um, so onto that idea of, uh, because we often hear civil rights, trans people need human rights, trans rights are human rights. Uh, so I want to ask uh, what human rights exactly are people who identify as transgender being denied? Are they being barred from owning property? Are they, be, uh, are they barred from voting? Are they denied um, a fair wage on the basis of their identifying as transgender? Are they denied personhood based on their transness? Um, and I want to say that the issue here is that they view social validation as a human right, and it's not. Uh, other people's opinions have nothing to do with a person's basic civil liberties. And the reason, there's another reason that I find the, the, the charge that my beliefs vis-a-vis -vis the protection of women's sex-based rights being the same as racism is that it's a false comparison and it obscures the issue. Uh, it's a forced comparison uh, to conflate 400 years of slavery and uh, murder, rape, torture, Jim Crow, and the segregation of public spaces by whites against black people with attempts to open women's bathrooms, women's shelters, women's prisons, uh, women's locker rooms, girls' sports, and other female-only spaces to male-born people simply on the basis that they identify as women. Uh, now, this makes me uh, transphobic, uh, apparently, or even a Nazi. And as a woman of Muslim and Pakistani heritage, the word transphobe has often felt to me like the term anti-American. Um, I've been accused of being both because of my political beliefs. I compare the two slurs because both of these terms are used to fire up the emotions and shut down any kind of robust discussion. It's difficult if somebody compares you to a racist, certainly for most people, to, uh, to go any further in the debate. Someone says, you're, you're, you know, you're just like a racist. Uh, just, so they like to shut down that discussion. So what does it mean um, to be transphobic? What does it mean to be phobic? Phobia means having an unexplained fear. I don't have an unexplained fear of people who identify as transgender. I have a disagreement uh, with their definition of what gender is. As gender, as I have always understood it, is um, a socially constructed uh, idea uh, based on roles and behaviors that a society typically associates with males or females. And we all know, you know, girls wear pink, boys wear blue, um, 
if you're a girl, you like to play with dolls. If you, if you're a boy, you want to play with trucks. And so, you know, I, myself, I'm a, I'm a gender abolitionist. I don't, I think that we need to do away with the idea of gender. And my question is that does this new gender ideology break down stereotypes uh, about the nature of men and women, or does it reinforce them? And I think that it's clear that, you know, it, it reinforces them. Um, so, as I said, I have a, I have a disagreement with people. I, I'm, and I, I think that that's very different to having a phobia. Uh, I'm not here to encourage violence to anyone. I'm not here to claim that I'm better or superior or more evolved than anyone else. I'm here to question that the idea that womanhood is something that anyone can identify into. So, so back to the idea of false comparisons. Um, when I think of the civil rights movement and whatever has been captured about it in writing, media pictures, etc., what I'm confronted with is images of black people being attacked with state-sanctioned violence by dogs and clubs and water hoses while they linked arms and tried to withstand the brutality of state power. I'm confronted with images of white adults braying abuse and screaming at the children who were first picked to desegregate schools um, in this country and of those children being escorted by police and armed guards just to enter a building. So <laughs> the irony was not lost on me when in Seattle, myself and three other speakers on this subject uh, had to be escorted in through a separate entrance with, uh, armed, with an armed guard because of the amount of threats we had all personally received uh, because of the earlier in that day, there had been a bomb threat against the library where the event was taking place. There was a huge protest outside, just people banging on the, on the doors and the windows and screaming the most awful abuse. Um, uh, you know, I've, I've said this before, I've received both rape and death threats for wanting to speak about this subject. And I know that many of us who do speak out about this subject uh, have, uh, you know, experienced the same thing. And um, I think it's interesting that the rape threats keep coming. It's almost as though, you know, we share some bodily characteristic that played an important part in that definition. Um, what I don't understand is why I'm called violent when I have not threatened anyone. I have never called for anyone to be deplatformed or removed from a job simply because they disagree with me ideologically. And yet my disagreement is defined as a form of violence by gender ideologists and trans activists. My belief that sex-based rights, which women have fought so hard for, are important and not negotiable is considered as bad as racism and an attempt to erase uh, trans people. I'm not sure how that's even possible. My disagreement with someone does not erase them. Um, if that were true, none of us would be here because there's not a human being alive who does not know someone who disagrees with some part of their ideology. I don't like the term cis woman, for example, but if someone calls me that, it's not violence and it doesn't erase me. It's annoying at the most, um, but I would have to have a very fragile existence for that to be true. Biological sex is important. Historically, women's biology has been the basis of our oppression uh, since civilization reared its head. We were not oppressed because we performed womanhood in some way or wore certain clothes. We were owned by men so that our sexual and reproductive capacities could be commodified as well as our labor. When humans first started to practice agriculture and they found that it required a large labor force because of the amount of work that's involved, as well as more and more land, um, tribes who conquered other tribes would kill all the men and keep all the women. And they did that because women can reproduce and a constant supply of workers is necessary. You also needed a constant supply of security forces or what you might call police or military. Um, there was also the added benefit of women's forced labor and they're being used for sexual gratification. Um, women in, this, in, in, in America were still chattel 
uh, which means that they were owned by their male relatives. Um, they could be bought and sold and won and lost in card games until the late 19th century. And so the hard won sex-based rights that women before us campaigned for and in some cases lost their lives for um, are incredibly important because they're an acknowledgement that women as a class have suffered immensely at the hands of men as a class, just as black people as a class have suffered immensely um, at the hands of white people as a class. So those Title IX rights here in this country are really important. Women and girls have a right to their private spaces. They shouldn't be afraid to express that. Many young girls don't want to share their locker rooms and other private spaces with boys who claim they're, they're girls. They don't want to compete against them in sports either. But uh, as my as my children tell me, because they are young and they are experiencing this, most of them are too afraid to say anything. Uh, nearly all of them are too afraid to say anything. And nobody thinks about their rights. What about their rights, right? This is a core distinction uh, between those of us who are silenced on the one hand and uh, gender ideologists, trans activists on the other. Trans activists go beyond promoting civil rights for trans people by insisting that, that trans women are literally women and that as such, they're entitled to unfettered access to women's spaces, sports, affirmative action slots, and more. How this feels like the silencing of women all over again. The extremists have succeeded in injecting the trans women are women concept in all, into all sorts of policies that were already adopted by sports associations over here, school districts and government agencies. They're pushing for more. The Equality, the Equality Act pending in the US Congress, which I believe that Biden actually ratified, gives gender identity, uh, a person's self-declaration as to whether they're male or female, uh, regardless of biological reality, precedence over sex as a protected category in federal civil rights laws. These are enormously important decisions being made that will affect thousands of women, and yet a robust discussion and critique of these policies is not allowed. So I think it's past time for as many of us to stand up and be counted as possible and to stop being afraid. Um, and I want to say that one of my old professors before the Seattle talk sent me um, a good wish and I always like to end my talk with it. And she said to me, courage calls to courage everywhere. I hope that's true.